Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. I got us a special beer, hopefully. This is Against the Grain Brewery. They're out of Louisville, Kentucky. I don't think I've had anything from these guys before. Jeff sent this to me, so thanks again, Jeff, for, for picking this up and paying to ship it to me and paying to buy it. And there's a hassle to buy beer and pay big prices on it, then pay big prices to ship it to somebody. So I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Uh, all you wonderful subscribers that I have, both Brandons and Rico and Jeff and everybody. I'm leaving a bunch of people out because uh, I get real mail packages all the time and it's like Christmas to me. Because I get these wonderful beers from around the country and the world uh, that I cannot get here in this part of Virginia. So I do appreciate it guys. Y'all y'all the best. Y'all y'all awesome. Yeah, I really are. Uh, against the Grain Brewery, this <laughs> this is Rico Sabin. And what that is, guys, according to the commercial description I have here, an India Pale Ale featuring Nelson Sabin hops, named after the Sabinon Blanc grape, is a variety of hops developed and grown in New Zealand. It has a strong fruity flavor and aroma that is described as, described as resembling white wine or fresh cut crushed grapes or gooseberries. Some reviewers of this hop are Perceive the fruitiness as being very tropical with descriptions including passion fruit, tangerines, and grapefruit. These hops are, are uh, organic and are about four times as expensive as our normal American varieties. Pricey hop. Very pricey hop. <laughs> In the can, it's got a very colorful artwork on it. Uh, it says nip up the top of this guy's nipple. He's got all kind of tattoos on his sleeve and got passion across his belly and got a bunch of grapes down at the bottom where it's um, supposed to be. So, uh, very colorful. He's got, he's got a, a, a sheep in behind him there. So, what's up with that? What's he doing with that? So, very colorful can. On the back here, underneath it says, Against the Grain Brewery, Louisville, Kentucky. Sexy beer for the sexy man. <laughs> Brewed with Nelson Sauvin hops, as sexy as Rico himself, this double IPA has a strong fruity flavor, resembling that of a, a fresh crushed Sauvin Blanc grapes, gooseberries, and passion fruit. Let it be known that Rico is, uh, for one thing, to be inside you. Well, you better say how that damn sheep there behind you, boy. They'll lock your shit, lock your shit up for that. 8.2%. It's a 16 ounce can. It says here, drink from the can. Homie, don't play that game. I don't drink from the can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour it in the glass. I'm going to see. No date on the bottom of this one. Jeff, I do appreciate you sending it on that one. I just got it a couple of days ago, so I want to get it, get it, get it reviewed pretty quick since it has no date on it. So we have no idea how old the beer is. So hopefully it's still kind of fresh. Big can though, and pink too. What's up with that too? Pink can. All right, let's get it into the glass. Big 16 ounce, we're probably not going to get it all in there right off the bat. And drink from the can. Homie, don't play that. Pour it in a damn glass. Release the carbonation. Don't get filled up. That's the reason you pour it in a glass. You want to see it. You want to release that carbonation. Drink it from the bottle of the can. You're just shaking that thing up every time you turn it up. All that carbonation, all that fizz goes down your belly. You get bloated. Uh, you get filled up faster. Uh, nah, I don't want to go that route. I know better. Pour it a glass. That way you see what you're drinking. See what your color is. Good. Beautiful color. Nice tangerine orange. Uh, uh, an amber color. 
a lot of bubbles trimming up from the bottom. Good looking beer. I don't know why they don't want you to see that. I want to look at it. I want to see it. I want to see what I'm drinking. I don't want to see no dead bugs floating around in it. That's another thing, too, but I'm just joking, guys. Looks good. Looks real good. Let's get a nose on it. Now, this is not your West Coast style. This is the New Zealand hops in there. I'm floral, fruity, getting hints of some grapes in there. Maybe a slight hint of some tangerines or some grapefruit. But it's not a big up in your face West Coast style, guys. I'll tell you that right off the bat. If that's what you're looking for, this is not going to have that aroma. It's not going to blow your hair back right off the bat. Now, as far as the taste, it might be different. I'm not getting it on the nose. So I'm probably not going to get it on the face. Let's give it a try. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Jeff. Thank you, sir. A lot of maltiness to this. I don't know how old this beer is, guys. Jeff, if you have any inclination of how old the beer is, let me know. Big maltiness to this. Uh, I don't know how old it is. It tastes like it's three or four months old. I am getting the hints of the grapes in there though. But like I said, a lot of times when you get to these Australian and New Zealand hops, they just don't have that typical Northwest Pacific style hop aroma or taste. A lot of more of a floral, fruity, herbal taste to me. It's not bad though. I will tell you that. It's not a bad beer. It is tasty. But it does have a strong malt taste to it. But a lot of times you will get that strong maltiness from several reasons. Either an old, old beer or uh, a hop that's been used in this beer that's not coming up to par with the malt meal that's in there. Like using some kind of sobbing hops in it or a, a, a European hop, like a Saz or a Tetanang or, or a Golding hop. Something that doesn't have that huge hop profile. So the maltiness sticks out a little bit more. Wish they put dates on this stuff, guys, so you know. It has nothing on it. And I'm going to pour the rest of it in there to see if there's any kind of cloudiness that's going to come from it. A lot of that stuff, the chunkiness and stuff will settle to the bottom of the cans and the bottles. The artwork is, is wonderful on it. I mean, it's, it's really, it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. Especially somebody like me that's got tattoos and see all this on there. It's kind of funny. Great artwork on the guys. Great artwork. Put a date on your damn cans. I'm a date Nazi. Ain't you heard? Kind of malty. Well, let's ride the fridge. Let's see where it ends up. Take it back and let her have a sip for two or three. Sip on it for just a little while. I will tell you this. It's 8.2%. I'm not getting any of the alcohol. I tell you, it's a well-made beer. They can hide that alcohol that well. Very tasty. If you didn't know what you was drinking, you would think this is probably a 6 percent Very nice. I'll be right back. All right, guys. I'm back. Got a little left here. Been sipping on it about 35, 40 minutes or so. Very nice. Very tasty. Uh... A little maltier than I was expecting, but um, that could be coming from the type of hops that they use on this with the New Zealand hops. Uh, they're like, they're, like I said, they're not that up in your face West Coast style, grapefruity pine and all that. A little more subdued hop. I am de I'm definitely getting the grapes on this. Uh, a little bit of tropical fruit notes, a little bit of grapefruit. Uh, like I said in the, in the thing there, maybe a little stone fruit or something like that in there. Very nice, but it does have a strong malt backbone. Uh, another reason why I would like to see a date uh, so I know exactly how old the beer is I'm drinking or buying, whatever. So, uh, and this one does not have it. So, I don't know how big this brewery is against the Grain Brewery out of, uh, uh, what did I say, Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky, I'm sorry. 
uh, don't know how big they are uh, or, or how many different beers that they, they brew. Uh, but tell them it's tasty. It, it, it is. It's a, it's a decent, it's just a beer. Just be aware, uh, the alcohol is well hidden, but it's not that West Coast style up in your face with the hops that they've used in this. Another reason, like I said, I want to see the date so I know how old the beer is I'm drinking it. Uh, it's just me, guys. I, I, when I'm drinking an IPA or a double IPA, I want to know. I want to. I want to have that information. I want to know when it was put in the can. Am I drinking a one-month-old beer, a three-month-old beer, a six-month-old beer? How old is the beer that I'm drinking? I have no idea. So, Jeff, if you have any information on that, you might put it in the comments on this review. Uh, if you know, and if you don't, well, I mean, we're at the mercy of the brewery if they don't date it. So, so tasty. To me, guys, it's my opinion. It's more in line with a European style IPA than an American IPA because of the hops that they've used being a little more subdued uh, uh, but they, the grapes are there I mean it is for something that's not been put in a uh, a wine barrel or, or something like that definitely getting the great characteristics to this to this beer it's a very nice and I may go against the grain on this one I don't quite think this is a name beer guys if I had a date on it I may think otherwise I, I may I may get it up into the A but with no date on the can, it is tasty. Alcohol is well hidden. I'm sure it's a well-made beer. And it may be a small brewery that they can't afford the dating machine. But, there always a but there. A but. And everybody knows how butts are. They're smelly. They're stinky. But, I want to see a date on it somewhere. Uh, if it's produced in a four-pack, six-pack, I'm not sure how this is produced. Or how you buy it. If it's in singles at a, at a beer store. Not sure. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how Kentucky does the beer. Every state's different, whether they can do singles or whatever. Uh, the, the beer laws in this country are just all over the place. They're, they're crazy. Each state has uh, the right to regulate how much alcohol. Like, and I just read that Ohio just really, they had a, a cap on the alcohol, and the bigger beers were allowed to be sold there. And uh, uh, they had to produce either a, a lower ABV beer, ABV beer there or they couldn't sell it there and they just they, they just repealed that so it's good for those guys in, in Ohio uh, so but I want to see a date on the can if you're producing uh, an IPA or, or a double IPA we got to have a date guys we got to have that date we, we got to know you don't want to go in a store and pay whatever this beer costs for a beer that's six months old or older you don't know how long it's been sitting on that shelf when it has no date on it that's all I'm going to say about that you know how I am. You know what I think. I do appreciate you sending it to me. Get to try something different. Very tasty. Well made. But I want to see the date. You got to see it. Come on, guys. Step up to the plate. And if you can't afford the day machine, hire somebody to put a sticker on the cans or something at the end of the damn line or something. That's just the way I feel about it. To me, guys, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it a 7 B+. Plus. Uh, need to have a date on this style of beer. Got to have, you know. I don't, I don't like the best buy or the enjoy buy, but it's better than no buy. <laughs> we got to have something on there telling us how old the beer is on this style of beer. The way I feel about it. Seven for me, eighty, probably eighty-eight or eighty-nine on this. Very tasty, well made, above average beer, but not quite to the A category in my opinion, because I don't have that information. Uh, over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says it is an 89, which is a very good range. I would agree with that. I would agree with that 100%. Over to Rate Beer, they say 96 overall, 96 in the style. I disagree with that. For me to give something like this a 96, it has to have a date on it somewhere. Either a Best Buy, Enjoy Buy, which I don't like, or a canned on date. It's got to have it to get that kind of grade from me. Just me. You say, oh, you're crazy. It's a great beer. I'm not going to argue with that. It is a well-made beer. It's a very tasty beer. It's not your typical West Coast style double IPA with the hops they use from New Zealand, but it is a tasty beer. Very well-made because the alcohol at 8.2% is very well hidden. Kind of tasty. I like that change up a little bit. 
Just want to see how old a beer is I'm drinking. That's all. Bottom line. All right. If you've had this one from Against the Grain Brewing, uh, this is their Rico Sabin Double IPA. Let me know what you think. Tasty. Just need that day, guys. Come on back tomorrow. See if we can dig something tasty out of the fridge then. Might have a day. Might be an Imperial style. Never know what we're going to dig out. I'm sure it'll be something tasty. Very rarely I dig something out that's not tasty. All these guys that send me beers like Jeff and Rico and Brand, both Brandons and everybody that sends me beers uh, usually sends me a nice tasty beer. Sometimes they send me sheets like uh, like this and give me a little more information of what's on the can or the bottle. And sometimes I don't. And I don't go to their website. I don't go to againstthegreenbrewing.com or whatever to find out more information. Uh, if it's not listed on Right Beer or Beer Advocate, that's the two sources I use when I do the beer reviews. I don't have that information. So, it needs to be on the package. On the can, on the bottle. The way I feel about it. If you're buying this at the store, you're picking it up, you're looking at it, it looks pretty good, you look at the, where's the date, no date, you know what I do? I set it back on the shelf. Even though it might be a very tasty beer, especially in this style. IPA, double IPA. Now, if it's a 12% Imperial Stout, not that critical. Not that critical. We'd like to see a vintage on it. What year it was done. But when we get to the IPAs and double IPAs and the low ABD beers, the lagers and the Hefeweizens and, and even the, lo you know, the, the lower ABD lawnmower beers, as I call them, I just want to see it. I mean, if Budweiser and, and all them guys can do it, of course they have deep pockets and they can afford all that equipment, but if you, these beers are a lot more pricier than those beers. Especially if you're buying one or a four pack or a six pack instead of an 18 pack or a 24 pack, but still, we need that information. It's consumers, beer buyers, whatever. Gotta have it. All right, guys, enough on that. Enough on that. Let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.